In this video, we're going to look at using redirect URLs in the Dynamics 365 marketing app. Now, we can put tracking code on our website and we can see where visits have come through, so we can see the pages that people are visiting. Uh, we can even drill down and look at visits based on, and we can see the specific pages and where somebody has started from the referral URL and how they got to that page, how long they've been on the site for, that kind of thing. And also if it was linked to a contact. Now that's fine, but it's very difficult to then group by a specific page. I'd have to download and export the information to um, a CSV file, and then I'd have to do some kind of sorting. And it's just a, not really that user friendly in terms of being able to get it for a specific page. So let's consider that if I have an advert that I'm putting out in various places, and the end result of where somebody's going to get to when they click on that ad is going to be the same page. But I want to know if somebody's landed on it and gone to it from a specific social media post, if they've done it from a Google ad, if they've done it from a LinkedIn ad, whatever that might be. So the redirect URLs allow us to set up a unique link that when somebody clicks on it, it will actually take us to the URL we want to go to. So if I go into the redirect URL section and I'm just going to go ahead and click on new and let's say that I want to um, have a redo redirect URL when someone clicks on it, it's going to take them to the dynamics marketing category page on my website. So I'm going to use that URL. So I'm going to paste the original URL. So in other words, where do I want somebody to end up on my site? And I'm going to give this a name. So we'll call this D365 marketing category page. And once I've got all that information, I'm going to go ahead and save it. What this is going to do is it's going to then give us this redirecting URL string that that is then the URL that I will share on any ads that I create or any social media posts. So if I then copy this and then paste it into the browser. Oh, hang on. Let's actually copy it. and then paste it in, then it's basically going to redirect and take me to that page. Now, if again, if I was doing this for ads, I would create multiple redirect URLs using the same original URL, but I'd end up with different redirect URLs, and that's what I would use and, and put into various places. Now, what will end up happening is based on um, someone then clicking on that, it will then end up showing in my insights. So let's go back and look at some of the other redirect URLs that I created a few days ago. And we can see here that we've got one that I created for LinkedIn that was basically going to go to a specific blog post, one for Twitter. So if I click on the one for LinkedIn, that was the URL that I then shared on LinkedIn posts for a specific blog post. If I then look at the insights, we can see that we've got an overview that is based on location. So I can then see where people have visited from. Then what I can do is I could drill down into um, the UK specifically, and then we can zoom in or we can then click and see, okay, well, what about this specific area? And then so on and keep drilling down until we kind of get to the, the um, smallest place. So then I can go back up and I can see everything again. What I can also do is click on the timeline and then this will show also if people have come from specific places and if it's somebody that has, uh, we already know who they are because they've uh, filled out a form or they've clicked on a link to um, that's come from the Dynamics Marketing app and they've clicked on a link that's gone to the specific, um, to our website then what we've got is the ability to track who that person is because there's cookies in the browser and we know that actually it was the contact Megan Walker that's gone ahead and actually clicked on this. Now, one of the things that I like also is if we're using the redirect URLs, if I go into that contact record and I look at the insights for that contact, then we can see that if we scroll along, we've got redirect URLs as an action or an interaction. So we can see that on the timeline. And then I could look at web interactions specifically, and then that will show any of those redirect URLs that were clicked on. 
Um, and then we can also see down at the bottom there as well, which redirect URLs were clicked by this specific contact. Okay. Now, another thing that we can do is for these ones, I've set up links that are going to pages on my website. But what I could also do is this one, I set one up that went to a just giving page that I've got that I'm fundraising for and use that so that I can also see insights for people that are clicking on that. Now, I wouldn't be able to get that um, otherwise because that's not my domain. That's not my website. So actually sharing a redirect URL means that I can still see how many people are clicking on that and going to that website, um, even though it's not my website. Now, one last thing that I like about this and using the redirect URLs is if I go into segments, what I can do is I can actually set up a segment based on somebody clicking on one of those redirect URLs. So if I go into this one that I've created and what I've done is if you, let's just go into edit mode. Um, when we're creating a segment, we want to add a behavior block. And when we add a behavior block, it looks like this. And it has a bunch of different things in there that are considered behavior. So somebody's clicking on an email, they are um, filling out a form, whatever it might be. And one of those is redirect click, uh, redirect link clicked. So if we use that as the behavior, then what we can do is say, and the original URL must equal whatever the URL is that you've pasted into the U uh, redirect URL record when you've set it up. So that way we're basically collecting a group of people that have clicked on a specific redirect link. And then what we can do is we can then add in our other things that are about the, the contact. So we can say they must have an email, they must um, have given consent and also do not bulk email is equal to allow. So different things that you might wanna set up on the contact as well. And then we also want to make sure that the clause in between is and also not or and not but not. So this way we can then use the segments to put somebody onto a specific customer journey. So maybe they've clicked on a link that's come from a specific ad, in which case instead of original URL, what you could do is use the referrer URL. So you know that anybody that has clicked on that specific ad maybe you'll then put them into a journey that will take them through and send them emails about information. So have you used this before? Is this something that you think you will start using? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.